Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech. We're doing Life in the Law today with Judge Shackley Raffetto. He's the retired uh, chief judge of the Second Circuit. That's Maui County and was doing that for a long time. He retired and he is a member of our board of directors. We are delighted to have him here. Uh, and today, uh, he's recently back from China and you can talk about the Jessup program in China. So we're calling this in a mysterious way, Jessup in China. So Keska Sei Kasa Shackley, what is Jessup in China? Okay, it's the, it's the Chinese rounds uh, of the Jessup International Law Moot Court Competition, which is an annual international law competition for law students. Uh, and the, let me just say this, it's, it's now, um, there are now about 87 countries participating, law schools from 87 countries, around 550 law schools wow, among those huge. countries. that's huge. And each of those countries has their own individual rounds to select the best teams. And then those teams go on to Washington, D.C. in April of each year and compete for the title of the best team. And uh, all these international uh, schools, law schools, uh, and teams from those schools compete with each other. And, and I, I've uh, attended that four times, and they have a lot of really nice social events so that the law students from all these nations can intermingle and get to know each other and sure. form relationships. There's a diplom diplomatic effect here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, uh, uh, Philip C. Jessup w uh, was the, one of the drafters, as I understand it, of the UN Charter. He was a Harvard law professor. And then I think after he passed away, um, his admirers put together this competition in his honor. And it has grown and grown and grown. It's quite old, actually. Yeah, it's been it's around like for a long time. It must be 50 years at least. I have participated as a volunteer judge um, in Russia several times, four, like four times. And then uh, in China, this is my ninth year. Wow. This is the 15th anniversary of the program in China this year. Oh. Um, and uh, about 50 law schools in China participated. There's something like 600 law schools in China, by the way. There's a lot of law schools. Yeah. And that, that says something too, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. it's very interesting. Uh, because at the end of the Cultural Revolution, I don't think there were any law schools. Yeah, and, and or law firms for that matter. You yes, know? that's right. Um, so that's all been created during that period of time in that particular country. Um, yeah, n let me just say that the, uh, co the program is conducted in English, the competition, so that means people like me uh, can go there and participate, and it's not through translation, which would be very cumbersome. Yeah. Every year, a group of prof law professors basically put together a complicated program, uh, pr uh, problem for the students, and then they also provide a list of materials and uh, and for the judges, they produce a judge's gouge so that the judges can get up to speed on their international law. And it's a very, very interesting program. Well, <clears throat> unpacking some of that. Okay. Um, why are you involved? What, what makes you travel all these places? I don't, I don't expect anybody's writing you a check for that, by the way. No. Uh, and <laughs> no. <laughs> why do you want to do this? What, what is in it for you? Oh, well... Uh, I guess just the satisfaction of, uh, I believe, I'm a big believer in uh, citizen uh, diplomacy and I think that uh, going to other places and, you know, one of the things I do is I, uh, together with a colleague, I, we teach an extra day uh, on the law and in this case the, the common law um, evidence system to assist the students mm -hmm. and to try to just, you know, spread knowledge about the law and the legal system and justice and uh, due process of law, mm -hmm. talk about that. And uh, I think it makes the world a better place. Uh, and I feel good about doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, it really is a it's tremendous also, payback after being a judge for all the years you were a judge. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, one thing I mentioned to you before, you know, I, I get a disconnect on this. Uh, my disconnect is that China has had... Mm, China's bar association, so to speak, its, its legal infrastructure is really new. It's really new. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, was, it was not 10 years ago that, it was, that they didn't have big firms. You know, and now all of a sudden they have firms that are huge. They yes. have hundreds all over in major cities, you know, the same law firm in major cities, and mm -hmm. hundreds of lawyers. And it was not too many years ago that law firms were hampered because the government didn't want you to do this, that, and the other thing. And they mm -hmm. limited you in what you could say and do and the cases you took. And they would try to influence the cases. 
um, all that seems to have changed. And maybe Jessup is a kind of indicator of that. Do you see that? Well, I, I do know that the, that the best Jessup uh, teams get hired by the, by the law firms there. Here, there, there, there. Well, how both, about the government? Both, Is actually. Uh, you know, I don't know about the government, but the, I know that the law firms uh, think highly of, of Jessup participation mm -hmm. in China. Uh, but I do know that, uh, you know, I've just heard this from people that uh, initially the foreign law firms would go there to assist foreign businesses in their investments in China. Okay, and then gradually there are more and more Chinese lawyers starting Chinese law firms, and so that's changed over time. The, the uh, Chinese law firms are becoming fully capable of handling business transactions for the Chinese companies, and so I think that you, there's more competition now between the Chinese law firms and the foreign law firms. Oh, sure. But that's what I've that's what I've heard. Yeah, I remember uh, hearing about this a long time ago. I got ago. some pictures. I can. I can yeah, let's look you. at them. I have a number of pictures taken from my last trip. Uh, this is just out the window of my hotel room, and uh, th just this is Beijing. Yeah, in Beijing, just to give you an idea of what it looks like in general. Next, another shot. See the mountains in the background. Uh, Beijing sits in a in a kind of basin, and uh, because of that, when uh, the the uh, coal you know fired uh, industries get get going. Uh, that basin can fill up with smog really quickly, and you can't see those mountains. This is an exceptionally clear day. And if it, off to the right, if you, uh, about 25 miles away is where the Great Wall is. And then the, uh, several hundred years ago, maybe 400 years ago, when the Manchurians came into China and conquered it and started the Manchu <coughs> dynasty, the last dynasty, um, uh, that's where they broke through the Great Wall, just a f just a few miles away, and you, I mean, Beijing was right there, one of the oldest cities in the world. Next, oh, these are two of my students from. I, I taught a summer school there at the University of International Relations a couple of years ago, and these are two of my students, and they were nice enough to come and have dinner with me. Uh, one of the ladies works at the uh, at, uh, at the. Uh, I think it's a patent office for the government, and the other one works at the uh, um, at the uh, propaganda department for the Communist Party. So they're doing well after they're graduated from law school. This is just a, uh, a building. See the, the snow piled up there, so mm. it's pretty cold. This is just street scenes. Uh, I went out walking around in the morning. This just gives you an idea what it looks like, mm -hmm. uh, Beijing street scene. Lots of cars, but you still see a fair amount of bicycles like this. And uh, you see, you know, 24-hour uh, uh, um, sundry shops, another big uh, building. More, those are all bicycle stands. Next, another street scene. And another. Okay, this is uh, Renmin University uh, of China. This is a huge, huge university, and uh, we, uh, the Jessup took place at the law school at <coughs> Renmin University. This is a bus that they used to bus us back and forth from the competition. You, uh, for those of us who are foreign judges, um, we had a group of about 35 or 40 <coughs> foreign judges, and then also uh, Chinese judges who, who had, uh, many of whom were graduates of, the, of participating in the Jessup program, and they bust us back and forth to the competition every day. This is the uh, in the law school itself, where the faculty lounge was. And the next, uh, the next slide is a, is a, you know, a poster for the co actual competition. They uh, provided a judges' room for us. So, by the way, this is uh, Wen Shi Zhu is the, the Chinese gentleman on uh, on the left there. He is. Uh, he runs the program in China. He's a senior professor at Renmin University Law School, uh, a really great guy and a great man. And he, he and Carol Kalinowski, who, who's a lady there, who's an American from Washington, D.C., she's very in, involved in the Jessup program in general. The two of those uh, folks working together created the Jessup program in China. And as I mentioned, this is the 15th anniversary of the starting of that program. And uh, uh, Professor Zhu uh, tries to um, locate the uh, competition um, 
in, in Beijing one year and then alternates to another city in China the next year. So I've had the opportunity through nine years of participation to um, go to uh, a number of other cities in China. This is just the judges room. These are some of the folks who were uh, who were came as judges. A gentleman was from Finland and I think, I forget where the lady was from. I can't remember, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Next, uh, this is just the judge's room where they, where they would serve us lunch, a very nice room, and, and uh, so we had a place to hang out between the competition. We were very busy. I, each each uh, session is about two hours long, at least two hours, and in the first two days, I, I uh, served on eight of those, so they kept us very busy. Mm -hmm. And of course, the same people tend to come, so you make nice friendships. This. This is uh, me and, and my friend Mati. He is a lawyer from Finland, and he comes every year. And so we, we strike up our friendship again every year and have a, have a very nice uh, social, social time with him and, and other friends that we've made. I, I like the outfit. It looks like something you might wear in Maui, eh? I think that, they, yeah, right. <laughs> that, that is the, uh, 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 I guess, what they wear at international courts. Uh, yeah, it, looks, it yeah. looks like that. It's yeah. a beautiful robe, actually. It's all made of silk. Ah, Quite different from the one that we, I used to use. <laughs> we'll take a short break, Jack. Okay. We'll come back and, and, and try to make sense of this for China, for the U.S., mm -hmm. for the program in the world, and what it means. And, uh, gee, uh, and I'd like to ask you some questions about exactly how it's conducted also. Okay. Hello, I'm Michael North, inviting you to join us on The Art of Thinking Smart, every second Thursday at 12 noon here at the beautiful ThinkTech studios in downtown Honolulu. I'm guest hosting for David Chang of Wellsbridge. Now we're talking to Hawaii's most intelligent, accomplished leaders about what makes them successful in their professional lives. By absorbing their practical wisdom, all of us can think ahead, think deeper, and become more successful ourselves. We look forward to seeing you on The Art of Thinking Smart. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Okay, you know, that was uh, Grace Chang, exactly. Uh, she's the host of uh, Global Connections on Thursdays. Mm. She'll be around shortly. You have uh, a lot of uh, programs that have international flavor. We do. We have three uh, areas of programs. Uh, one is art, community, environment. Two mm -hmm. is uh, law, uh, international, and business. And the third is science, technology, uh, and energy. Great. Those are our categories in general. Terrific. This one would be, I guess this would be... Mm, Science, no, not science, law, environmental, is, I got them all mixed up. Uh, <laughs> law, um, international, and business, that's uh. what this would be. Anyway, uh, why don't we go through the rest of your slides? Oh, okay, okay, next step. Uh, this is, this is um, one of the uh, group pictures of the teams. Uh, not all the people were on the t team, I guess. Some were supporters, uh, but... Um, you, let me just say, you had two students arguing for each side, uh, applicant and respondent, and then during the course of the competition, they had to, they had to be able to argue either side, uh, and then they could have uh, other students helping them. The three of us seated there are the judges, and they usually used a, a panel of three. The uh, gentleman on the, on the right there is from Romania, and he teaches at a law school uh, in China. A uh, number of people uh, who turn up to serve as judges do that in China. They're teaching, you know, at various universities in, in China. And the uh, lady on the right is, uh, is uh, uh, a Chinese national who serves as a judge with us. So it's nice you get to meet all these people, which is great. Mm -hmm. This is another group picture of another different team. And I'm trying to remember who everybody is. I can't remember offhand. Oh, this, this, this must have been the quarterfinals because there's, um, let's see, there's five of us, five judges in this. And oh, the two, two fellows on my right are from Singapore. I've gotten to know them pretty well over the years. And the man on the far left is from Houston, Texas. And the lady on my left, I can't remember where she's from. 
But this would have been one of the better teams because mm -hmm. it was at the quarterfinals. This is one team standing behind you? No, two, two teams. Two teams, okay. And this, this is be another quarterfinal because we have five judges there. Uh, let's see. The lady on the, on, on, on the right of uh, the gray hair is from California. Don't remember where the next lady is from. The lady on the left is from Australia. She's a barrister in Australia. And the gentleman on the far left is an American who teaches uh, at one of the law schools in, in Beijing and uh, lives, th lives in Beijing. I notice in each of these pictures you're at the center of the group of judges. What does that mean? I ordinarily got appointed by Professor Zhu to serve as the president of the board mm -hmm. to keep order. And well, That's great. I once had a funny story. Uh, we were in a session once, and uh, and there was a guy sitting in the back, and as the students were arguing, his cell phone went off. And I said, please, you know, turn your cell phone off. Please resume. The cell phone goes off again. And I started getting annoyed, and, uh, and, and I quieted down, and we started up again. The cell phone went off the third time. And I ordered him to get out of the, get out of the, I thought I was back in my court in, in Maui. And I ordered him to, to uh, leave the room and we got into quite a confrontation there. And uh, finally it all settled down, but Professor Yu, Zhu uses it as a story to the judges to tell them, you know, you're in charge and you make sure that, oh, the, how interesting. that the students... Oh, how Yeah, and, this, and this, <laughs> that the students, uh, uh, you know, this is an important time for them. They've prepared long and hard and we yeah. want to make sure that they have the best experience possible. Oh, so he always, so interesting. he always points to me. Uh, <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Would you have done the same thing in Maui? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, of course. We had more authority there. <laughs> Here, the guy didn't know what I was talking about. I probably <laughs> this. Now, this is the final competition. So we have what nine judges, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, the student uh, who was there back to us is uh, is actually arguing the case. You know, m most of the law students are women in China. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, this is Professor Zhu th thanking some of his staff. He has a very large staff who do a terrific job. These nice young <coughs> girls. He he was kind enough to give them each a couple of roses, which was very charming. Mm -hmm. And oh, and uh, he always makes sure that uh, all of our, all of the judges, uh, us judges who travel from far away places to be there, receives a little something and uh, a very nice little plaque uh, in our honor. And this just happens to be me receiving mine. It was very very kind of him to do that. He's a very kind man. And this is. See, during the competition, you're not allowed to speak with the students at all. And, uh, and until the final <laughs> banquet dinner, which is, this is a picture of that, and then you have the opportunity, to, and you're encouraged to sit at, the, at a table where, uh, so, you know, especially with students who you judge, and they know who you are, and they, mm -hmm. they want to talk to you about mm -hmm. what did I do, and, you know, mm -hmm. how did I do, and so on. And, and these are students from the University of International Relations, where I taught uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and they sought me out and had a very, very nice conversation with them. I'll say, this is the last of my, I think, one more photo. Yeah, this is just a beautiful sunset view from my hotel room. It shows mm -hmm. you how pretty it can be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, after the last uh, banquet, Carol Kalinowski and I put on an extra day of uh, training for the students, and we talk about theory of the case, theme of the case. I talk about common law evidence to now, their system isn't a common law system, but uh, I think the common law evidence rules of relevancy and so on help them to understand how to organize a huge um, uh, collection of facts and issues and decide which evidence is most important for which issues and how they can organize their arguments. So we do that. That's ex expanding over time and, and is a, a very popular with the students. So we are able to make an additional contribution. And, talk in terms of the common law a little bit. So it's a civil law country? Apparently, yes. I, I think it's a version. I'd say civil law tradition mm -hmm. rather than the system. Well, what's the difference between the way it's uh, done in China and the way it's done here? I, well, I can't exactly tell you because my understanding is it's very difficult to actually go to a, a trial in China. Mm -hmm. I've never, never, I've toured courtrooms, but I've never seen a, a courtroom in You can't in get in. That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> the, the, the moot court is like in this country, it's a, an appellate court, right? Yes. 
And so you're arguing points of law. I mean, yes. law, the law is important there. Yes. Now, I just wonder, you know, because people say that, um, you know, China isn't necessarily a, a, a nation of law and that the law bends a lot and maybe it's politically affected. What did you see in terms of the respect of the participants for the rule of law? I think that my impression is they're very serious about learning as much as they can. And they were, uh, you know, they can argue from case authority, although they understand that, that they don't have a system of precedent or stare decisis in, in, their, in their system, uh, but they understand what it is. And, uh, and they adapt to it pretty quickly, I thought. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's interesting. It's uh, the rubber and the road. I mean, it's, and you, you're going to explain to them what stare decisis is mm -hmm. and the rule of precedent, and they're going to understand it and maybe even incorporate it in some of their arguments. Well, you can, you can raise it in, in questioning the, the students. You can, you can say, you've cited a case to me. What is it about that case that you think is helpful to the court in deciding this case? Yeah. And uh, what authority? Does that case and they have? They argue that authority to you. Well, they ex they, they, we are, they're expected to be able to explain yeah. whether that authority is binding or not, yeah. and if not, why not? Yeah. And and then if it's not, how else can it be helpful? So the impact of the case of the precedent is not the same as in the U.S., but there is an impact of yeah. that precedent. Well, just like in real international law, that there's there's no, there's no case precedent uh, theory in international law. It's all it's all. Um, you know, by by analogy, I, I guess would analogy, be a good way to yeah. put it. Yeah, and in fact, I was telling you the story earlier. I, I have a friend uh, from Russia who served on the Rwanda court for a while, a very distinguished jurist. And I asked him once, I said, "You you have these judges from the civil law system and from the common law system who are appointed to these courts. When you folks are sitting down trying to decide these cases, do you have rules of evidence? I mean, how do you how do you hash this out?" And he indicated to me that uh, the, the common law uh, is judges are, uh, I, th I think what he was saying is that they are a little more influential in a sense because they have these uh, traditions of using the rules of evidence to decide cases and decide what evidence is relevant and not relevant, whereas it's my understanding is not so uh, prominent in the, the other systems. So, so what are the rules of evidence like in China? Are they like the American rules of evidence? I don't think that I don't know if they have any. Ah, but that's a common law concept. See? Okay. Yes, I guess so. Yeah. So um, you you spoke before they would get a, a problem, uh, maybe a complex problem, and they would have to make their arguments over that. And uh, I guess you you sat on a number of these proceedings uh, this past trip. Mm -hmm. uh, were all the proceedings that all the proceedings involved the same uh, fact pattern? The yes. Same? What was the fact pattern? Well, just summarize. Gosh, I don't know if I could do that. It's a very complicated. I have to sit down and make some notes because they run together in my head. What was it it's about? Every, everyone's what was it different. About? Uh, I can't. Was remember. it international law or was it China? Well, something well, it's all international in law. I, I, you know, I, I can't do it on the fly. I'd have to sit down and, and make a note. You should have told me ahead of time. <laughs> So when they get up and argue with uh, the case, what, what are they arguing? Everything and anything? Are, they, are the well, questions they, they need to argue, is that I identified? Well, they tend to be a little wooden, you know, as a, as a first or second year lawsuit <coughs> would be. <coughs> and, uh, and, and the judges jump in right away with lots of questions. And so most of the proceeding is uh, sort of revolves around whatever questions the judges are. And the judges are are all over the place. Mm. But that's good experience, sure. you know. And, and it's a hot court. <laughs> well, that's what they call it. Yeah, but. yeah. Are you a hot court judge? I try to be m moderate because, yeah. uh, because otherwise the students don't have an opportunity to make their arguments. Yeah. You want to you hear know? them argue. Yes, you want to encourage them because you're, you're, the, part of this process is to grade their, their oral ability. And so you want to let them have the, and part of it is answering the questions, of course, but, but you want to also let them have an opportunity to kind of shape what they say and, and then go from there. Are they, are they prepared by, by virtue of their law school training to do uh, the Jessup procedure? I mean, or do they have to learn it fresh by virtue of the procedure itself? Well, they don't, they don't have, uh, my understanding in, the, in the, the Chinese legal training system is they don't have opportunities to do practical uh, lawyer skill development things like this, like moot courts. Um, 
uh, but they do work very, very hard. So they come in very well prepared. Only, you know, only in a few instances did, did students try to read their arguments, in other words. Most of them could get You don't get encourage it. them to do that. No, we discourage it, actually, mm -hmm. uh, as you would here. Yeah. But, uh, but most of them don't need it. I mean, they come in and they're ready. And they're very Why does it mean so much to them? I think just because they, well, uh, one is they don't have the opportunity to get this kind of training otherwise. And, and so this program is highly regarded in China. And, uh, and also it provides an opportunity for the top five teams to go to Washington, D.C. Okay. Which and is, and the, uh, the Jessup organization pays their way for that. No, no. Each nation oh, takes care so of the finances. China uh, is behind this. Thing. Yes. China is supporting this. Yes. <clears throat> the disconnect I get on that is that this is likely to change the way law students think about the law. It's yeah. likely to expose them to different thought processes and maybe get, get a view of common law in lieu of civil law. It's likely it's going to stretch their, mm, you know, otherwise perhaps strict view of how to conduct a law practice. Does the Chinese government yes. like that? Well, well, well yes, because, uh, because China exists in the world of international law, you know. I mean, they have international lawyers that represent China and you know, recently they had a case involving the South China Sea. Oh, yeah. Right? Did you cover that in Jessup? No. That would have been a little hot. No. Well, we, we stay away from things that are, that would be counterproductive for this, yeah. for this program. Yeah, you want the program to survive. Right. <laughs> right. And we want to help the students. I mean, that's what the program's for. Is to so I'm an ordinary lawyer. Okay, I'm not. I have not been a judge. Least, hardly, hardly. No, not, a, <laughs> not, not a uh, you know a, 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 a judge in, the, in, the, in, the, in the civilian practice anyway. But my question to you is: uh, Is it possible for me, as an ordinary lawyer in the state of Hawaii, to become involved as a judge in the Jessup program in China? Uh, yes, yes. That is something. Let me know if you're interested. I Ooh, can help wow. you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is great, Shackley. What you're doing uh, is it's a great retirement. Uh, Thing, but it's more than that. It's it's for the benefit of the of the practice, for the benefit of the profession. Mm -hmm. It affects uh, you know you're a, you're a, um, a, a citizen diplomat when you go and do this, and it's uh, it's part of our extension, our outreach to China and so many other places. Yes, well, it's very inspiring experience yeah. for all of us who participate. It really is, and and, and you have fine people like Professor Zhu who dedicated their lives to making this program available to. Um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of law students in China. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Important for the connection between our two countries. Absolutely. You're going back next year? Oh, yeah. I knew I'll that. I'll go as long as I can. Thank you, Shackley. Great to have Thank you Thank you, here. Jay. Aloha. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs>